everything you need to know if you're planning a visit to Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. I'm Chris, this is the Traveling Princess, and in this video we're gonna tell you how to get in, how to get around, what to eat, what to see, what to do, and of course, where to stay. Traveling Princess, are you ready to show them around? Let's go! The first thing we want to tell you is just a little bit about Victoria. So this city was founded as Fort Victoria in 1843, originally as a trading post by the Hudson's Bay Company for fur. Then there was a gold rush. Lots of people came here for gold because this was established as the provincial capital of British Columbia. By the way, Victoria is often referred to as being more British than the British. And so when you come here, you're going to see lots of British things. The Inner Harbor, definitely one of the cool places in the city. We'll talk more about this later in Things to Do. But because it has this big sea life, Victoria is home to Canada's West Coast Naval Fleet. There's also a big fishing fleet here. 400,000 people call the Greater Victoria area home, about 250,000 in the city. So it's a small, quaint city, and it is often considered to have the best climate in all of Canada. They often say it has the world's most northern Mediterranean climate. By the way, as somebody from Southern California, this is a really cold Mediterranean climate, uh, but it rains less here even than in Vancouver. The second thing to know before you go to Victoria is about Vancouver Island, the island that Victoria is on. So Vancouver Island is the largest island off the west coast of North America. It is 320 miles from the northern tip to the southern tip where Victoria lies. Interesting part about Vancouver Island is it's actually closer to the U.S. mainland than it is to the Canadian mainland. Now you'll find lots of things around Vancouver Island, so definitely, you know, if you're heading to Victoria, there's a lot of other things you can visit. We'll talk more about those when we get to the things to do list, but you'll find forest areas, you'll find beaches, you'll find rugged coastline. So if you like the city life, hang out in Victoria, or if you want to see a bit more nature like this, then head out just, you know, 20 minute drive north of Victoria and it gets pretty rural on this island and you can get away from the crowds and have a bit of nature all to yourself. Now you definitely need to know about how to get to Victoria because it's on an island. The way you're likely gonna get there is by ferry. This is the most popular way to get there. This ferry leaves Vancouver. It takes an hour and a half and it gets you to Vancouver Island. Then you still gotta drive a little bit to Victoria. But the coolest part about this ferry ride is when it goes past the islands on your way there, you go really close to these other islands. And I think most people who take this ferry don't even realize that there's a sun deck up here because well, it's rarely sunny here because it rains all the time. As you can see, there is nobody else on this sun deck. Everybody else is down on the lower decks, but this is the coolest place to be. And I walked on this side to also show you how close we are to the islands on that perspective. It's really neat. This is a really neat way to get there. Oh, but I should point out this is an auto ferry, so you can also drive your car on this ferry, but you can also take like a float plane, you can take a helicopter, and you can also go on this ferry just as a passenger, not with a car too. If you're coming from Seattle, there's other ferries that'll bring you here from Washington, but I think if you've never been on an auto ferry, and this is our first time, it's pretty neat. Hey, and actually if you look that way, way off in the distance, you can see one of the other British Columbia ferries way, way out there, gonna pass us this way. Now, Victoria does have its own international airport called Victoria International Airport. It's about a 30 minute drive from the city center. You'll find regular flights from Vancouver and Seattle and from a few more other places further afield like Toronto and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's talk about getting around Victoria. So one of the neat things about getting around Victoria are the double-decker buses. The city's more British than the British, and so they've got double-decker buses too. Not all of them are double-deckers, but you will find a few. Fares are $2.50 a person, $5 if you want to ride them all day. Now, if you're going to some of the other things on Vancouver Island, you'll probably want a rental car. She agrees you want a rental car because it's a pretty big place, but the city center is pretty compact. So if you're coming in off a cruise ship, you're just here a day or two, you can totally walk around this little city center with just the buses, your feet, maybe rent a bike too. And if you're parking your car on the street in Victoria, they do parking by space. So you'll see these little poles by parking spaces. You remember the number 1183, and then you go to the nearest parking machine, and then you put in the number 1183. Now, one thing you won't find to help you get around Victoria are app-enabled rideshare services. There's no Uber, there's no Lyft, there are taxis, so you can take taxis around, but you're not gonna find any cars in your Uber or Lyft app here. 
So now let's talk about things to eat in Victoria. Victoria as a city has more restaurants per capita than any other city in Canada. So if you're looking for food, this is a foodie city. The number one thing to eat here is the high tea at the Empress Hotel. This is a portion for two, and we get two teas on the side. You get a pot of tea, six cups per person. Two people get two teas, and you get this three-tiered set. You look at the top, there's desserts. If we zoom in to the second section, this is like finger sandwiches. And then at the bottom section, there are raspberry scones with raspberry jam and more British than the British, clotted cream that you rarely see outside of Great Britain. So if you're looking for high tea, this has been named one of the top 10 high teas in all of the world. And let me tell you, the traveling princess right there, she got her first cookie and she loves it already. Do you want more? Victoria is the capital of British Columbia after all, so when you're looking for things to eat, check out British things. There's a lot of British options, in particular fish and chips here at Frankie's Modern Diner, which is just right next to the Inner Harbor. You can get not just cod fish and chips, but also halibut fish and chips. They also have a lot of pastas. We really enjoyed the seafood chowder that had salmon in it, and one of their specialties is also curried penne. This is like a penne pasta that has curry and mango chutney and shrimps. So that looks super good for dessert. We've got a key lime pie coming up. They got a sign out front that says it's the best key lime pie in town. I'm gonna let you know. I wonder how many restaurants in Victoria serve key lime pie because we are quite far away from Key West, the real home of the key lime pie. But let's give this one a try. It's a good, smooth key lime pie taste, but it's nothing like the ones at Key West. A Key West key lime pie, as soon as you bite it, will make you pucker. Literally, your mouth will open. And I didn't quite get that from this. So if you like just a smooth lime taste and not sour, then you might like this one. For real pucker key lime pies go to Key West in Florida. For a tasty pastry in downtown Victoria, right off Government Street, get yourself a beaver tail. What's a beaver tail? It's basically almost like a fried piece of flatbread. This one is maple flavored, about six bucks Canadian. Pretty tasty. They've got a whole bunch of different flavors. Just order a window, get it to go. This is our second beaver tail in three days. We head to Victoria's Public Market, just one block from the Chinatown gate. Something pretty unique you can get here, British-wise, are meat pies. But we got some pasta and lasagna from La Pizza and La Pasta. We got the lasagna, the spaghetti carbonara, made with egg, as it should be, rather than Alfredo sauce, and some crispy cauliflower. And if you want to learn how to cook your own food, you can even take cooking classes here at the Community Kitchen. If you want to do some touristy shopping while you're in Victoria, well, the best place for that is Government Street. It runs from the Inner Harbor up towards Chinatown. The first few blocks in the Inner Harbor are all pedestrianized. As you can see, there are no cars here, though the shops do close pretty early, like 6 p.m. every night. So make sure you get here before they close. There's also a few neat squares to check out in town. Bastion Square is one of them up that way. And if you're looking for stuff that's open late at night, you're sure to find it in Chinatown, just half a kilometer that way along Government Street. Now, if you like books, you should definitely stop in the Munro's Books just off Government Street. This is like bookstores of old used to be. It's a super classic bookstore, high ceiling, super decorative, just a book lover's paradise right here. So just next to the bookstore, you can check out Murchie's. It's a tea shop, but they've also got this 120 year old tea grannies. You just push a button and the grannies have tea. It has over 800 moving parts. And it was handmade in the Black Forest in Germany. That is something. While you're here, get some of their tea. Or if you're hungry, maybe some of their pastries or a sandwich. Now let's talk about things to do in Victoria. So this is the capital of British Columbia. The Parliament Building is here. You can take free tours of the Parliament Building weekdays on the hour. Tickets are free. Just get there 20 minutes before the tour to get them handed out. If you miss a tour, you can eat in their dining room from like 8 to 3 p.m. breakfast and lunch. You can eat inside. If you're here at nighttime, they light this building up quite nice at night. Now, if we look over this way is the uh, Royal Museum. There's a museum in there. There's also an IMAX movie theater, so you can see things about the humpback whales. And now if we come over this way, 
The inner harbor is right here and there's tons of stuff to do around there, particularly in the summer. There'll be like street performers, street market stuff. In the winter, it's just a really neat place to walk around. Now for some of Victoria's tasty Asian eats, head to Chinatown. And you might be thinking, Chris, you don't look like you're in Chinatown, you look like you're down the world's narrowest alley. This is Fontan Alley in Chinatown. It is Victoria's narrowest public street. This is a public street. It's less than a meter, one side to one side. And you go down the other side and they got like neat lanterns that are up there. It's a pretty cool place to visit. Now Canada has a few Chinatowns, but Victoria's Chinatown is the oldest settled in 1858 and the most intact with classic signs like this. Also make sure to check out Victoria's alleys. This one is called Trounce Alley. Down it you'll find gas lights that are 125 years old. Lots of nightlife down here, interesting shops. Now this really unremarkable alley has a sign on it that says caution slippery when wet. Why? This one's called Waddington Alley and these bricks in this alley are actually made of Douglas fir, modern Christmas tree wood. Now the most popular attraction on Vancouver Island is Butchart Gardens, also a 30 minute drive from Victoria, a nice scenic drive really and this garden has been here for over a hundred years. Park garden, part theme park, I would say. It's maintained very nicely. It's open year round. Adult admission is $25. This part of it is the most famous part. It's the sunken gardens. And just next to the sunken gardens is a fountain that was installed in 1964. I like to think it's the fountain that was here just before the Bellagio. It kind of feels like the Bellagio fountain. Maybe not without music and lights and that, but think about it in 1964, big fountains. That's a pretty cool fountain. And what I thought was extra cool about Butch Art Gardens, even their trash cans were in bloom. Take a look at this. There are some little flowers on top of the trash can. And not just this one, this was on every trash can in the garden. Fancier trash cans, they had hand sanitizer, doggy bags, and doggy drinking fountains. And they've also got a really neat Japanese garden. I've been to a lot of Japanese gardens outside of Japan, and they just don't seem that cool, but this one is really quite neat. And if strolling the gardens get you hungry, good news. They've got afternoon tea here too in the tea house. $42.95 will get you this three-tier set of tasty morsels on the bottom, finger sandwiches in the middle, desserts and on the top some warm scones so if you didn't want to get high tea at the empress because that was twice as expensive this one's half the price still pretty good as well nice views from this tea house it is a small tea house so if you come here in high season in the summer definitely i recommend you make a reservation now the couple differences that you'll notice the china here is not fine china made in england and the loose leaf tea they give you a strainer to pour it through to make sure you don't have any leaves in your tea as opposed to a bag that you take out at the empress okay so now you might be asking yourself chris if i can only have one afternoon tea which should it be butchard gardens or the empress definitely the empress hands down i know it's twice the price it is one of the world's top 10 best teas it's amazing everything was fresh made there delicate tasty this tea half the price probably about half the taste i would say the sandwiches at the bottom were pretty tasty the scones were okay the pastry selection was pretty much mediocre in my opinion now if you're coming to butch art gardens and you need to eat this probably is the best option for eating at butch art gardens the coffee shop pretty mediocre as the only option here in the winter. If it works out for your schedule, maybe to get lunch before you come and then enjoy the gardens or come early and then get lunch on your way out, that might be better than the afternoon tea. I don't regret that we had it because like I say, it's the best food option here and it worked into our schedule, but I wouldn't plan my trip around this afternoon tea. But definitely the traveling princess's favorite attraction was the rose carousel, two bucks to ride and it's inside. So if you got rain or rainy day, just tuck in here for the little ones. By the way, this is the fastest carousel we've ever been on. This thing goes so fast as the person standing here, I've got to lean on the inside to keep standing on it. But as you can tell, the traveling princess has a big smile on her face, so I'm sure your kiddos will enjoy it too. Now how long you should stay at Butcher Gardens depends on how many pictures you want to take, whether you're having afternoon tea. I would say somewhere between two to four hours. We were here for four hours because we took a lot of pictures and we did a lot of video and we rode the carousel and we had afternoon tea. And if you've got little kiddos where you're pushing a stroller or you're disabled in a wheelchair, you'll have easy access to Butchart Gardens. There's nice paths that are 
ramp accessible throughout the whole park. Definitely visit Victoria's Fisherman Wharf District. This is a floating village. Everything here is floating. There are floating shops, there are floating houses, floating restaurants, floating tour operators. It's quirky, it's colorful, it's in the James Bay. It's about a 15 minute walk from the main Inner Harbor District. It's like a three minute drive. I really like this. If you've been to the Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco and you're like, I'm so over Fisherman's Wharf, let me tell you, I think this one's better. It's certainly more unique. And these restaurants have nice outdoor seating facing the bay, which is great on a nice day. On a cold day, they've got these little domes that people are eating inside, which is pretty cool. Now, in addition to the shops, restaurants, and tour companies, there's also people who live here at the end of some of these docks right here. These are actually floating homes. And if you want to stay in one of these floating houses, no problem. There's Fisherman's Wharf floating B&B. &B. You can stay in one of these too. And if you like to go whale watching, good news, I counted at least eight companies that offer whale watching tours out of the Inner Harbor. While you're at Fisherman's Wharf, you should definitely get some seafood to eat. There's a number of seafood restaurants here, but this one is called The Fish Store with some pretty high-end seafood for a pretty touristy place. Come and take a look at this. This is called the Salmon Chowder Three Ways. Inside of it, it's got uh, local salmon, candied salmon and smoked salmon. We've also got the six superior oysters. Oysters, $19 for the six. You get 25% off if you're here during happy hour. And this is the 12 ounce chowder for about $8. Let's go ahead and check this one out. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. Mmm. It's got uh, corn and potatoes in addition to the salmon. I often don't like salmon because most places you get it have super strong salmon taste. Here, it's just really nice and smooth. I like it a lot. You can also find fish and chips here. There's a Mexican place out there and it's amazing views of the harbor. So you should definitely eat at Fisherman's Wharf when you come here. These restaurants do close pretty early. So it's either a lunchtime or like early dinner spot. Also another really great part about eating at the fish store is they have a floating covered heated patio. So if you're here in the winter, you can eat here in floating warmed comfort. Now for a neat attraction that's about 30 minutes driving to the north of Victoria, check out the Matahat Skywalk. This skywalk just opened in July of 2021. It is a 450 foot spiral skywalk that has amazing views of this lake down below. It has these really tall mountain slopes with trees on them. The water's blue and pristine. You can see all around from up here. Now, if you're on the fence about visiting Malahat Skywalk, you're like, it's a little bit expensive. It's a little bit of a drive out of Victoria. Let me tell you, just do it. Visiting this thing was one of our favorite things that we did while we were on Vancouver Island. It's just a pretty cool place. Even though it seems super low tech, you just walk up this spiral and go down and slide, but there aren't many places like this in the world. And if you want to see more about the Malahat Skywalk, I've got a whole video on it. You'll find a link in the description below. You should know about where to stay when you're coming to Victoria. We stayed at the very centrally located Empress Hotel built around 1910. And this hotel, it's a Fairmont chain hotel, but it's really this classic old looking hotel. There's also lots of other hotels right here around the Inner Harbor. So look at the Inner Harbor and kind of go out from there because if you stay in the inner harbor then you can pretty much walk to everywhere you want to go this is where you want to stay when you come to victoria i mean if not at this hotel because this one's expensive but maybe one of the other ones around here a little cheaper we booked this one on the american express fine hotels and resorts program so if you have an amex platinum card consider this because you get a whole bunch of free perks third night free two hundred dollars off lots of great deals that make this one a little cheaper for platinum card holders and the last thing to know is we've got more videos on Vancouver and British Columbia. So if you want to check out a travel guide for Victoria, some hotel reviews around here, you'll find them in this playlist or one of these videos right here. You'll also find links in the description below. As usual, we won't say goodbye because we're going to see you in the next video.